He is a television legend, not just here in Arizona, but all over the world with his reporting. Here, here take a look at this. Tomorrow on A Current Affair, inside the home of the Menendez brothers' attorney. And next, we'll be back in a minute with the heartbreaking story of the blind Rhode Island boy who was duped into buying a dead parakeet. I just thought he was real quiet. This is where I got introduced to Mike Watkins. Who are these <laughs> sick people? Right. I tell my kids no matter what I do in my career, uh, I will forever be best known for 30 seconds in Dumb and Dumber. Dumb and, Dumber. and I'm, I'm still, still getting residual are you? That, yeah. That's nice there. Yeah. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, he is a TV legend. Uh, it is Mike Wackus, uh, and he here with us uh, talking about, of course, we were uh, talking about the um, Keep Sweet and Stay and Obey. A, a, a documentary, documentary on Netflix that I'm proud to be part of. But yeah. I want to talk to you about this book here yeah. because um, we were talking that in news, people don't understand how much the stories affect people, especially right now as we're dealing with gun uh, deaths and everything like yeah. that, and those reporters out reporting that. This book right here, uh, Story Hustler, you were a story hustler. You were out there. Well, for 40 years, I was blessed to have a job that was suited for an adrenaline junkie, which I am. And I, much of this stuff I probably would have done if uh, I, I was going to go to prison or I was going to have adventures. <laughs> and I found a way to make a living having adventures. So I was very lucky. But the book is a scattershot of just some of the craziest things I encountered during my career. Yeah. And before we come, we were talking that you actually have been to more crime scenes than some police officers. You've, you've talk to more witnesses than some of the detectives. Yeah. Um, and, and how do you get these people to talk to you? Yeah, well, you know, I, I, that it's true uh, because I just did it for so long. I mean, I covered a lot of homicides. I did a lot of blood and guts reporting. And uh, you know, there's never one way into a story. And uh, every story and every interview is, in essence, an inter inter interaction with another human being. And every, you, you do it, you do this yourself. And you approach, you know, you hopefully have some sensitivity about where this person is coming from and then try to ask them the question questions or interact with them in the way you need to. Sometimes that's aggressively, sometimes <laughs> not, you know, sometimes it's very amicable. Um, let's talk about some of the uh, um, major stories that you've been on, O.J. Simpsons. Um, we can even talk about where they sent you out to cover um, John Jr. Um, Kennedy, John, I, uh, John Kennedy plane Jr.'s went down, plane went down. And, yeah, yeah. Um, we, we talked there. about the war and Jeff and everything. These are stories that are part of our history that you you actually brought the forefront more than what we would have seen. Maybe I just again I feel like he just serendipitously I was very fortunate. The one thing that I can claim is, and it's just dumb luck mostly. I was at the, the right place at the wrong time, wrong time, right place. You know, the morning they found the bodies of Ron and Nicole. I talk about that in the book, which precipitated the O.J. Simpson story in the trial of last century. Been around long enough, I'm hoping to get the trial of this century. Don't know if I'm going to laugh at it. You know, but uh, going to uh, Portland and covering just uh, insane coverage of Tanya Harding yeah. after she and her gang of uh, uh, knee whackers went after <laughs> Nancy Kerry. You know, just there's some ins some of the most insane moments uh, you know, sitting down at a table in a, pr a jail yeah. with a, a notorious serial killer named the Night Stock, I, <sighs> Richard Ramirez close as we are now over you know and it was a feisty little and i talk about you know my inter, my interaction with serial killers and ambushing elizabeth taylor on an airplane right you know, it's crazy and I, I definitely want this book because we worked together and we were on different shifts and so when i would see you i we would were, just we get, were definitely the def ships yeah. in the night <laughs> and i would get just a, a glimpse of just what you were working on so i never really got to actually get your story hearing you in person because you were so busy and everything like that and that's why I think a lot of people who've watched you here in the valley or even across the country definitely want to pick up this book to see but I think the other part I think right here is the PTSD that you talk about because it has affected you hasn't it well I in the book I, I dedicated as you see to my son and my daughter 
cult in Dylan because uh, I look at that as sort of my mea culpa. I explain to them why their father is so crazy. <laughs> and uh, they, they live through that and my family has been really this sort of touchdown in my life, kept me sort of sane. But uh, I, I know that it impacted me. I'm, I'm, my kids are in their 20s and when they are at home, I still walk to the end of the driveway. Be safe. Let me text, you know, uh, it has made me I clearly overly protective of my children because every day I went out and sort of went to the worst place in the world. And so I start, it started to think, this is what life is. And, you know, I mean, obviously there's a lot of good stuff, but it made me a little crazy. There's no doubt about it. I like to see you back on TV. I like to see you. So what's really, as we wrap up, what's next for uh, Mr. Wackus? I'm just glad that my uh, friend uh, Brad Perry still had my phone number. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I'm rolling. You, we made, you know, we've done some films. Yeah. We did a film together. Yeah. And so I'm just taking whatever comes my way and sort of enjoying it. Well, well I'm going to say this. I want to introduce you to the uh, criminal minded media who has the Biggie um, podcast, a bunch of different crime things. Right. I think this should be a movie, it should be a book. I think criminal minded uh, media should be doing this. So I'm going to introduce you to those guys. And I just want to make sure. My dear friend. As long as always always looking spot. out for me. <laughs> Mike, thank you for Thanks, coming buddy. in. This Good is, to I just see got you. to interview Mike Walkis. This is like, uh, this is a I'm crazy. I'm Brad Perry, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> All right. Uh, we're going to get the book very quickly. Good. Thanks, buddy. Where can they get the book? Oh, uh, Amazon, uh, paperback, hardcover, and ebook. It, it was uh, crazy to get it online, but it's there now. All right. You got to check it out. It's the Story Hustler, Mike Walker's story. Um, you got to check it out.